Okay. Now we have placed our volumes. We have created, sorry, our curtain wall. We have to make sure always that we know that we can select any single part. You can select the model itself. This one, for example, the panel. Okay. You can select any one of these parts and do whatever you want. Delete. Uh, this, this is yes, I'm, I'm hover over in this part, type, then I select the panel. Okay? The thing that this panel is bent. Okay? You, I can delete it. I can't change anything here. Let's try to change it. For example, I want to start <laughs> panel. It's changed now because this one is not bent. Sometimes when you select a wall or a curtain panel, it gives you a small bend on the panel itself. When you have the small bend over the panel, so it's bent. Just click over that bend, or just click on an icon here which is unbent. You feel. Okay? Then you are free. You can just change whatever you want. That means, if you select any panel, you can choose any type of the, the panels here that you have, and then you will have it repeated over your panel. If you select anyone else or any other panel, for example this one, now I have the ability to select it and choose, for example, let's say this type. So now I have a different. You can choose any panel family and assign it as a panel for this place. You can also select the module itself. This is the pin that I was talking about. If you have this pin, so you can just unbend it or just click on this icon. Now it's unbent. You can change the family. For example, I want it uh, square. Now I have this one square and this one circular. Fine. You can also select it and delete it. You don't want to see it here. So this is the module and this is another one. And here you have only the division of this panel. Fine. That's the way of changing any single part or editing any single part to a curtain pan or curtain wall. Okay? Now you can also change or edit the profile of this wall. Double click on this wall. You can change the profile. If you remember in the previous class, we have talked about changing the profile of a wall, right? Draw the profile that you need. Slice here, trim here, this to this, and this guy to this guy, and just click OK. Now you have this opening inside your wall. Fine? It's easy, right? And don't forget that you can just select the wall, edit type, and you can duplicate and change everything. Here you have, we have choose the fixed distance, but actually you have more than one option. You have fixed distance for a certain distance or dimension between the modules and the grids. And here you have fixed number if you have a certain length of your curtain wall and you just know that you have three modules but you don't know what are the exact distances between these numbers or sorry modules so you can just click on fixed number and it will divide it maximum spacing I just want the maximum space between these modules to be two meters it will automatically generate the modules for the best dimension between the modules to get a fixed number of modules with the fixed dimension of uh, <coughs> the module. So if it's for example 5 meter and you get one maximum maximum one meter for the distances. Maybe it will give you five uh, distances, so four modules and one meter inside between each other. For uh, sorry, each two. Five? So it will automatically calculate. And the latest one is the ma the minimum spacing. I just want the minimum spacing between these modules to be one meter. So it will not be 19, for example, or 90. It will always be one meter or higher, or lo longer, or sorry, larger dimensions. Fine. That's about the settings for uh, the curtain. What is uh, about, uh, just for million size? It will, it will consider the million size with the dimension. So if it's one meter, it will be center, center or meter, or from the face of the million to the face of the million. Fine. Uh, how to select one straight uh, panel? You don't have one straight panel. You have more than one panel yeah. on the same line. For example, in horizontal, you select the top column. 
to change the... the Sometimes we can go to an elevation and make a window selection like this and select everything. Okay. If you are in an elevation, for example, let's select this one mm -hmm. and let's isolate the selection. <coughs> now I have this only here. I can just do this. But now I have selected the panels and the mullions in between. So I can go to filter. Under filter, I can just keep the panels. I didn't explain the filter yet, so that's why I didn't talk about this. Fine? Okay, that's about the selection of a certain row in the curtain wall. Fine? That's all about the curtain walls. Now, what if you need to draw a curtain wall or a curtain? A curvy curtain wall. So go to the plan for all matters. Plan in 3D, we can do that. We can just uh, select this wall and let's select the empty tab again. Okay, I will click on this R here to draw uh, this R. Don't forget that you can give this information while drawing. Click on this part, this time, and then this time. What did I get? I get, sorry, the wall. But it's straight, but the constraint is R, right? Why I have got this straight one while I have, I, I'm drawing the curvy one? Because I don't have any volume to give you the curvy shape. In order to get a curve in the more, sorry, in the curtain walls, you need this vert, these vertical divisions, right? So that you will have the panels beside each other, and it will give you, it will generate the eye. How to do that? You can even to select the volume, or sorry, the grids from this panel, and get vertical volumes. One, sorry. Not giving me. Let's go for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, for example, as much as you need. Fine? Then go to the 3D, you will have your arc. Once you have vertical threads, you can do the arc outside. Sorry, curve. Uh, point. That's about the curtain walls and rivet. Don't forget that you have the ability to select any of your elements and you'll get all the properties in the properties palette, right? So, base constraint, we have talked about that. It's the bottom of the wall. And if you have an offset, for example, one meter, it will offset from the base constraint by one meter. If you have a top offset, sorry, a top constraint, now I want it, for example, unconnected, I can get a certain height. I want it to be connected to the roof, now it will change the height of this uh, curtain wall, so it's telling you that this horizontal curtain band is a regret and volume will be deleted because the height does not reach this level. I will click delete elements. Fine? And always please read the messages that rivet pop ups when you are uh, sorry, pops up when you are working on it. Fine? Let's go down a little bit. Room bounding, I will talk about it later. Down, down, down. You have an offset for the grids. Where to start the grids? If it's, if it's starting from this point, so I have an offset. I can give it an offset. It's starting from the beginning here, right? But it's not enabled because I'm using an empty uh, panel and I'm adding the vertical volumes manually. So I'm placing the volumes in the grid that I want. Fine. And these are the options you can browse them when you are working. Fine. Again, edit type, duplicate, you can do it, you can rename, you can get all the data or the settings that you need. The latest panel here is the identity data. The identity data is the place where you add texts or specifications, descriptions, uh, annotation things for your uh, elements or objects. Fine? So we'll talk about it later when we are working on tagging or keynoting or something like that. That's about the words. Uh, I still have one extra type or one more type of words that when you have a word that is combined of more than one type. For example, the word from zero to one meter is 40 millimeter thickness, and then it's 20 millimeter thickness, or two meters, for example, and then another one meter is two or uh, 20 or 30 millimeter, uh, sorry, centimeter thickness. How to do that? 
You can do each one separate, and you can do one stack wall. How to do the stack wall, which, are, which is a combination of more than one type of walls that are combined vertically. To do that, just draw any wall, for example. Okay? In the type selector, we can go down to get to the stack wall. Fine. I have just selected any of the walls. I can go to the type selector. I can go down till I get the stack wall category. Under the stack wall category, choose the type that you want. If you don't have the type, choose any one, and then edit type to duplicate. Again, select any of your walls, and you can see now, this is the wall. The thickness is larger, a type of finishing, a sweep, more than one type of wall are combined vertically. How to do this? Select, choose the type of the stack wall that you want to need. If you don't want to use any of the existing types, you can just select the wall and choose any of these types and click on edit type. Duplicate, let's name it stack wall. Maybe it's an interior one. And you can just give the description that you, that you need. In the structure, you can edit type. Now you don't have all the options of the wall. So remember when we uh, access to the structure of the wall, we have materials, we have identity, we have blah, 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 blah. Here, no. You have the ability to select what are, of the, of what are the types of the walls that you are combining. So in the type selector, you have many types of walls, right? You have created some. You have already prepared many types of walls. Now you can select them here. If you have the types prepared, so you can select them here. Let's say that I want my first wall to be, for example, one meter height. Okay? Let's say it's a zero. Fine. And the type I want it to be, for example, this one, plaster whatsoever. I want the second one to be 1.5 meter height. And I want this type, for example. Let's go for the third one. I want four millimeter finish. Uh, no, it's the same. I will select another one, maybe this one. I will select from here. I want it to be one meter also. And the, the latest one is variable. Why is it variable? Because it will take the rest of the height, the remaining height, and it will be given this type of what? Offset, it will offset your walls from the center of the wall. I can review. I can give it an offset. For example, let's say zero. Now it's a, with a zero offset. Zero. Now it's another zero <laughs> One. These are my types. If I change any of these types, it will be changed here. Sometimes it's overlapping or it couldn't be created out of this type. It will tell you what is the issue. You can deal with that issue. Fine. I've changed, oh sorry, chosen everything. Let's click on OK. Click on OK and click on OK. OK. Now you have your tabs selected out here. Fine. That's the start point. And to be honest, you will not face a lot of issues to use stack tools. It's not that huge deal. Fine. These are the types of wall that you are needed, or so you have the ability to use in Revit 2017. So you have the options, and you can combine them and prepare or so complete your projects. Fine? OK. Let's go to our plan again. Delete, delete, delete. Which one? The, the curtain wall is uh, combined with the wall. Okay, how to combine the curtain wall and the wall in the same time, in the solid wall? Okay, let's go to the ground floor plan. Now I have this wall, and I need to add a curtain wall here, and I wanted to cut it automatically to give you the opening. Fine, let's do that. Just click on the wall, create similar, for example. Choose the type of curtain walls that you need. If the type that you are selecting has this option enabled, 
automatically embed, click OK, then draw the curtain wall in the center of the solid wall. It should be drawn in the center of the, the curtain, so the solid wall. If not, draw it anywhere else, then align, AL or align, click on the center line of the solid wall, and then click on the center line of your curtain wall. It will automatically open your solid wall and gives you the points. Go to the 3D now. You have it here. You can just change the height, for example. It will automatically close the extra height. Fine. That's the case. Any questions? Do you want to try the stack wall? Okay, just create any type of stack walls, please. But make sure that, please, guys, make sure that you have the ability to combine the type that you have here. If you want to create any stack wall and to use any type of walls inside the stack wall, for example, you go for this stack wall and you click on edit type, WA, <coughs> stack wall, edit type, the type that you have the ability to use here are the walls that you already have in the type selector. If you don't have the type created here, Go to any wall, any type of walls, okay, and create the new type that you need. Then you have the ability to use it in the stack. Fine. Any questions? Any questions, guys? Okay. Open your system, please, and create one or two stacks. 